Prince. I'm a senior training instructor for drill bits. Today we're going to talk about the proper procedures for installing and removing nozzles or sometimes referred to as jets in a Reed Hike Log roller cone bit. But before we get started we need to have a few tools available to us. We need to have several things that we're going to use during the course of jetting and removing the nozzles from those bits. First we need to have some puller pliers. This will be used to help us get the nozzles out of the bit in case we need to change them. These are snap ring pliers which are going to be used to help secure the nozzles inside of the bit. We need to have extra snap rings in case we lose one or one is misplaced or they don't have one in the bit when we get it from the factory. We're going to need some O-rings in case the O-rings inside the bits are damaged or there's something wrong with them we'll need to replace them. We're going to also need the nozzles that we're going to use. These nozzles are sometimes called jets. There's two different kinds. There's the uh, flathead K-type nozzle and there's also a shrouded or CK type nozzle and depending on what kind of nozzles we're going to be using in the bits we need to have the appropriate nozzles on hand. We're also going to need to have a nozzle gauge. This will make us, uh, will be used to ensure that the uh, nozzle size is what it's supposed to be and then we'll have a little bit of grease available to us in case the nozzles are hard to get into the nozzle socket. This grease will help uh, the nozzles get inside the, the uh, socket easier. Now we're ready to start jetting the bit. So as we open up the box, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the bit that's inside the box is the same as the bit information that's on the label. And what we're trying to do is make sure that the size, type, and serial number is the same that's on the box label. So if you look at the pen of this bit, you see that this is an 8 3 quarter EHP 43 8. And if we look at the box label, we see that EHP 43 8 3 quarter is listed there. The serial number C41226 is also listed on the box label and it is correct. So we know that the bit in the box matches what's on the box label. In the event that the box label and the bit pin does not match up, then we would need to change the box label and report that to quality control. We have to assume that the size and type and serial number that's on the bit itself is correct so we would make the back box label match up with what's on the, uh, the pin of the bit. So now we're ready to take the bit out of the box and the way we're going to do that is fold the flaps back and then we're going to fold the bit down onto the surface. Now in order to jet a bit we have to have the bit located on the pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this bit upside down on the pin with the phone facing forward and prepare it to be jetted. So as we turn the bit up on the pin, you'll feel when the bit is on the pin because it'll be stationary and the box will stand up by itself. Then we will remove the box. And there's a few other things that we need to take a look at on this bit before we begin to jet it. The first thing we want to do is do a visual inspection of the bit to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. We want to look at the pin, we want to look at the bit body, we want to look at the cutting structure, and we actually want to take a few minutes to just turn these cones and make sure they're tight. And the reason we would want to do this is two reasons. One, these are sealed bearing bits and we need to make sure that the seals are in them and they are effective. And the second thing is, is if you know how tight the cones are before the bit goes in the hole, when you get ready to dull grade the bit, you'll know how tight the cones are after the bit comes out of the hole and you'll be able to do a fair evaluation on bearing and seal failure. So now we're ready to start jetting the bit and what we're going to do is we're going to remove the snap ring that comes standard in the bit from the factory. Inside the nozzle pod will be an O-ring, a snap ring, and a nozzle protector. So in order to remove the snap ring, what we do is we take the snap ring pliers and they have the tips on there and we're going to squeeze the snap ring. You put your hand over the snap ring in case, because, in case the snap ring comes apart from the uh, pliers because you don't want it to fly around or fly up and hit you. So you just squeeze the snap ring and you remove the snap ring from the bit. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to remove this nozzle protector that's in the nozzle pod right here. This comes from the factory and is put in there to help protect the nozzle pod during the painting and cleaning process. Now, in order to remove that, we turn the, no the, pull up the, the snap ring pliers upside down, we squeeze on the nozzle protector, and we pull it out the nozzle socket. So now we're ready to put the nozzle in. But before we do that, we need to take a look inside that nozzle pod. Now I realize that you can't really see in there, but there is an O-ring in there, and the O-ring looks like this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to inspect this O-ring visually to make sure that it's not damaged, 
to make sure that it has no nicks or cuts or tears in it. In most cases, the O-rings coming from the factory will be in good shape. So we take a look at that and that O-ring is in good shape. The other thing we need to do is make sure that the groove in which the snap ring fits in is clean of any debris. And the way we do that is we just take the tip end of the uh, snap ring pliers and we just run it along the groove and if there is any metal or little material in there, it'll come out and we'll, we'll have a clean snap ring groove. So the snap ring needs to be able to float freely in there once it's installed. Okay, so now we're ready to install the nozzle in the bit. But before that we do that, we need to make sure that the nozzle is going to be the correct size. So as you see here on this nozzle, it shows an 11C. That means that this nozzle has a diameter of this hole of 11 30 seconds. But we can't be sure that that's going to be the correct size of this nozzle. I've had situations myself where the nozzle had a number on it and that wasn't the correct size. So the way that we're going to make sure that that nozzle is the correct size is by using a nozzle gauge. And as you can see on this nozzle gauge, they have a series of numbers. In this case, they're in increments of two. So we put the nozzle gauge inside the nozzle, and you can see on the nozzle gauge that it reads 11. That means that this nozzle is an 11 30 second. You want to make sure to put a nozzle gauge in all of your nozzles so that you are ensured that the correct nozzle is going to be in the bit. Now we're ready to put the nozzle actually into the bit. The way we do that is we put it into the nozzle pod, like that right there, and then using your thumbs, you apply pressure to push it in below the level of the snap ring groove. Now in the event that that nozzle would be hard to push in, this is where you would put a little grease around it, a little lubricating oil or something that would help the nozzle go in smoother. So once the nozzle is in there, we're ready to put the snap ring in. And again, we're gonna put the snap ring back into the bit the same way that we took it out. We're going to put the snap ring pliers in the uh, eyelets. We're going to cover it with our hand to make sure that it stays protected. And we're going to put the snap ring in the bit. Now, if the snap ring is seated correctly, you will see a gap between the two snap rings, eyelets. And this will be the same gap that the snap ring had when it was originally installed in the bit. The other thing that has to be able to happen is the snap ring has to be able to move freely in the snap ring groove. And if it does, you know two things. One, there's no debris in the snap ring groove. And the second thing, the snap ring is, is seated properly in there. The other thing that you need to do whenever you install a snap ring is if you look at this snap ring closely, you notice that one side of the snap ring is rounded and one side of the snap ring is flat or sharp. Now, when we install a snap ring in a bit, we always want to put the sharp side of the snap ring facing upward. The reason for this is as pressure is applied to, this, to the nozzle itself, the snap ring will, will apply pressure on the flat side against the snap ring groove. So you can tell easily between the rounded side and the flat side. So you just put the snap ring in, cover it with your hand to make sure it doesn't spring back and get you. And then again, you look for that gap and make sure that, that it floats freely inside of the nozzle. So that's how we install it. Now when it gets time to remove it, we're going to reverse the process. We're going to still have to take the snap ring out, so we put the snap ring pliers on the eyelets of the snap ring itself, put it into compression, cover the snap ring with our hand to make sure that it doesn't fly away. Sometimes we have to work with it a little bit. That's okay, that's normal. Take the snap ring out, and now we're ready to remove the nozzle. This is where our puller pliers come in. Now puller pliers are a little bit different than the snap ring pliers. They have a shape with an edge on it. So when you put the puller pliers inside the nozzle itself and squeeze, that part of the nozzle uh, puller pliers expands and you're able to pull the nozzle out. So all we do is we insert the puller pliers, apply pressure, and pull the nozzle out. And that's how we remove the nozzle. Now sometimes when you jet bits, you're going to be using the shrouded nozzle or the CK type nozzle. Now this nozzle is different from the standard K type because it has a shroud or an edge on it and it has a groove in which the snap ring will sit in. So in order to install this kind of nozzle, we have to put the snap ring on the nozzle before we insert it into the bit. On the other nozzle, we put the snap ring on after. And the way we do that is we hook the edge of the eye, remember to keep the flat or sharp side facing up on the corner edge of the nozzle. 
and then we just work the snap ring around. And once the snap ring is on there, we are ready to install it in the bit. So the way we install it is we put the nozzle into the nozzle pod and push it down with our thumbs as far as it'll go with the snap ring still in, in above the surface. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to squeeze the snap ring and at the same time push the nozzle down into the nozzle pod. So we get our snap ring pliers. I'm going to turn this a little bit easier. So we just take our snap ring pliers. We put it in compression and at the same, we don't have to worry about this snap ring flying off because it's in a groove here. So we just put it in compression and we push the nozzle down with our thumb and we release it. And once we release it, it will have the same gap as we saw on the other nozzle and it will be free to move in the in the uh, snap ring groove. Okay, now it's time to remove the uh, shrouded uh, CK type nozzle. So what we're going to do this time is we have to be able to pull the nozzle out at the same time as we squeeze the snap ring because the snap ring has to be in compression in order for us to get the nozzle out just like it was when we put the nozzle in. So in this case we squeeze the snap ring in, and we work the nozzle out, and we pull the nozzle out of the nozzle pod. And that's how we remove the nozzles from the bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the, the flat top nozzle back in again just to show you again how that process works and to make sure that you understand that once you do it, you have to do the same process on all three nozzles. So put it in the nozzle pod, push it down below the, the edge, take a snap ring that's got the sharp or the flat side facing forward, take your snap ring pliers, Route it, cover it, put it in there, make sure that it rotates freely in there and that they have a gap. The gap's right here. And you're ready to go with your nozzles. And just all, before you put the bit back in the box, you need to double check and make sure that all of your nozzles are correctly seated, that all of the gaps are there, and that your nozzles freely rotate. This will prevent any problems. Once all the nozzles are installed and seated correctly, we're ready to put the bit back in the box. And there's a little trick that I can show you how you get the bit back in the box effectively. And these bits are heavy and they're hard to handle sometimes and we want to be as safe as we can with them when they do it. So you know that uh, when the bits come in the box, they have two boards. They have a board that sits on the bottom of the bit and one that sits on the top. So what we do is we place the board on the bottom of the bit as we would have it in the box. We fold back the flaps of the bit and we set it over the the bit and the board that's in the bottom of the box. Now if we tried to turn this bit over exactly like it is now, we would have a problem because the pin of the bit would not be all the way in the bottom of the box and we'd have to adjust it. So the way we handle that is we slide in whatever direction we're going to flip the bit. We slide that bottom part of the box all the way up against the pin. So you can see here I have the bit at an angle and I've slid this side of the box because so I'm going to flip the box this way, all the way against the pin. And once that happens, you just lay the bit down. And as you can see now, most of the pin of the bit is in the box. Now all you have to do is put your hand in the pin of the bit, pick the bit up, and there the bit is inside the box, positioned correctly. We put the board on the top, put down the flaps, and close the box up, and you're done.